Hey there world! I'm the Courageous Goldfish and today I have some really really cool stuff to show you. I'm super excited. I do sometimes feel like a scatterbrained pigeon that's like bringing you shiny rocks and things. The shirt is very true right now. I'm just gonna put that out there. There is no think happening in this brain at all whatsoever so hopefully you guys are on the same wavelength as me right now because otherwise I'm so sorry for what you're about to witness. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. My mom, being the wonderful human that she is, found these to put in my Christmas stocking. I'm so excited to put them up. These are like handmade local vinyl sun catchers. So these are like holographic. So when you put them on your window, the light shines through and makes rainbows in your room. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So this one is the moon stick, obviously. And I also have the cosmic heart as well as the crystal star, of course. So I'm honestly so, so excited to use these. I hope they work. I don't see why not, but I'm really, really excited to see how many rainbows it makes. I don't know. Like it just, I, I love the idea of playing with light, especially rainbows. And so I am really, really looking forward to this. I also got this absolutely adorable pin for Christmas as well. This was made by a local artist that I really, really love and admire. And so it was such a thoughtful gift and I am so pleased to finally have one for my collection absolutely adorable. I would highly, highly recommend checking out this artist on Instagram. I'll leave her handles in the description. I love how cute she is. She kind of reminds me of Nezuko a little bit, but she's so, so cute and I'm really, really happy to have her. Also, for Christmas from my lovely family, I got some more Seraph of the End manga to continue my collection. Um, I actually did get the first four volumes for Christmas last year and just haven't bought anymore. I've been focused on Black Butler recently because of the new anime revival and so I am super super pleased to be moving on with this series as well. So I've got number five with Yoichi on the front. One of my favorite covers of all time, six with Cruel on the front. You know my girl Cruel and I have a long-standing relationship. She is gorgeous. I am super super excited to own this. Volume number seven, which has Kimizuki and his demon on the front. I can't remember what her name is right now. And another one of my absolute favorite covers, volume number eight with Grin on the front. He needs no introduction. He is one of my favorites and I will die on that hill. Volume number nine has Mitsuba on the front. And where my current collection ends at this point in time is volume number 10, which has Crowley and his two side chicks on it. I do not remember what their names are either. I think maybe the blue haired one is like, Chessie maybe? No, that's not right. Is that right? I don't think so. In any case, I am super, super happy to be moving on with this series as well. Although I have not finished reading Black Butler, I do have all of the current volumes. And so I feel like I should probably finish that one first before I make any more progress with this guy. But you never know, I am not known for my impulse control. Speaking of Black Butler, we do have developments in that area as well that we will talk about after I talk about this next thing because I know it's not actually that relevant to this channel specifically, but I loved it so much and it was another Christmas gift that I got from my parents that I just had to show it off because I am like utterly in love with it. And that is Game of Thrones, the costumes by Michelle Clapton. Oh my God, I was so excited when I unwrapped this on Christmas day. I have been wanting this book for years, literal years, and now to have it like physically in my possession, it's hefty. This is a hefty boy. This is a, this is like, you could, you could kill a man with this for sure. Again, like I said, I've been wanting to read this for years. I am a cosplayer at heart and I absolutely loved the costumes of Game of Thrones. It was one of the best parts of the show for me personally. And I just feel like after reading this book, I have so much more appreciation for the little details of each and every costume. I love that she's been able to go into detail about why she chose what she chose for each character and to go into depths about all those small little details that you wouldn't even notice in the show. 
Like, honest to God, some of the outfits that I was like, eh, boring, next, have now become my favorite costumes out of the entire lineup, just simply by looking at them in close detail in this book. It is an extremely interesting read, even if you're not particularly invested in costuming, but if you are, I would absolutely recommend this book. It is gorgeous. I think one of the really fun parts about it for me as well is that I'm actually working on a lot of Game of Thrones costumes and so being able to see the real ones up close and in detail is just like, oh, the best reference material a girl could ever ask for. I am actually toying with the idea of remaking my Karth Khaleesi dress because Oh my god, now that I can see it in like way more detail, it is like so much more detailed than I ever thought it was. I am also working on Cersei Lannister's red dress, but now that I've seen the embroidery up close and personal in this book, there's like a whole, a whole sheet, like a whole like fold out sheet for this one dress alone to showcase all the detail on it. And oh my god, mine looks completely shoddy in comparison. This is just like a masterclass on costuming in my opinion, and although, I mean, I, is it necessary for every fan to own this? No. This is just very specifically geared towards me, I feel like, and I am so, so in love with this. If this even somewhat seems like something that's up your alley, I would definitely recommend picking it up. And now, getting back to Black Butler, of course some of you know that I just recently finished my manga collection as of date, and I was super duper excited to finally be finished and like, caught up, I guess. However caught up you can be on an ongoing series, but see I did actually manage to pick up a Black Butler art book while I was in New York in Cota... 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 Kino Cunha. That's the name I'm looking for. Why am I saying Cota Bukia? But anyways, I picked up the third art book at Kino Cunha while I was there in New York City, and I have been toying with the idea of picking up the other one since, and finally bit the bullet. So I have today the first and second Black Butler artworks that I bought off of Mandarake. I knew that I was gonna love these art books, but I was not expecting how much I was gonna love these art books. Specifically, the second one is actually my favorite out of the set. I just really, really appreciate Toboso Sensei's style. I love how the art has evolved over time, and I just think that there are some really, really interesting illustrations and interesting concepts that are included in these art books. Particularly a few of my favorite ones from the first volume include this awesome two-page spread of the cast in Sebastian's iconic outfit, this one of Ciel on an undead carousel horse, also very on brand, very on theme. Uh, this absolutely jaw-dropping Robin Ciel. Oh my god, gorgeous. I love, love, love the art style of this one. And also this really cool looking original character. I think he would make a really cool figure. Of course, from the second collection, I love this illustration. I have the postcard of it. Ciel and Lizzie are so cute. I also really love this Undertaker one. It's really cool. And of course, my favorite cover of all time, Lizzie from volume 13. This really awesome one of Lao and Ran Mao. Oh my god. I really love the vibe of this one so much. It's actually probably my favorite of the entire collection. So much so that I have considered cannibalizing this book a little bit to rip it out and hang it up. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. I can't rip my precious children like that, okay? Honorary mentions to this really cool one of Ciel and Sebastian in like a Vivian Westwood, like punk English style, and this really cool like neon laser tag one. Can you tell I also really like Ran Mao? I'm gonna do some B-roll to talk about my favorite illustrations, of course, but just know, I love, love, love these art books. They are amazing and I would recommend picking them up before they get super expensive after the season drops. Because you know that Black Butler merch is gonna go up in price as soon as that new season drops. And that finally moves us into the final contender for today. I have a brand new scale figure to unbox with you, also from Mandarake. I've been hunting for her for a good deal for a while. I've always really, really liked this figure and I did toy with the idea of pre-ordering her when she first went up, but I just wasn't at the point in my collection where spending 19K on a figure was like acceptable to me. And recently I found her for an absolute steal of a deal and so I jumped on it and I'm super duper excited to show her off today. So without further ado, 
let's just get into it. Inside of this beautiful box here is a scale figure that I have been bargain hunting for for quite a while. I knew I loved this figure and I knew I loved this character, but her retail price was just not it in my opinion. I mean, comparing it to what figures cost nowadays, it's not that bad, but at the time I was like, absolutely not. There's no way I'm paying that much for a figure that looks like this. Like, it just, the value wasn't there. And it wasn't an absolute need on my part. And so I thought, well, if it so happens to be that I can find her for a decent price, I'll pick her up. And that is exactly what happened. However, I was not expecting to find her for this good of a price. This figure retailed for 19,000 yen, and I picked her up on Manjarake in like, I think she's like, B A condition or something like that for 11,000. So I am super, super excited about the deal I got on this figure. I think that she's gonna be worth it for the price that I paid, even though shipping was a bitch. I have heard, however, that there have been some quality control issues with certain copies of this figure. And so fingers crossed that she didn't come broken, fingers crossed that she's intact and not like horrifically quality controlled. Let's just get into it. This is the 1 7 scale My Next Life as a Villainous Katarina Kleiss figure by Furyu. So yes, this is in fact the My Next Life is a Villainous figure. I loved this series. It's one of the only manga titles that I've ever read, uh, and the anime was amazing. Still crossing my fingers for another season. I don't know if that's been confirmed or not. I haven't really kept up with this series in the recent times, but I absolutely loved my adventure with it. And when this figure came out, I really, really wanted her. I thought she was so cute. And yet I could not justify paying like 19,000 yen for her. Nowadays, 19,000 for something like this is like pretty standard. But at the time that she went up, I was like, mm, a little bit too much. And also for you, as far as I know, doesn't have like the highest reviews in terms of quality. So I was a little bit nervous about paying that much for a For You figure. Seems like she's turned out okay. All of the reviews that I've seen, um, I've seen a couple of channels on here on Boxer already, uh, and they haven't been like too bad in terms of reviews. Uh, mostly they're having issues with like, she leans over time because her dress is really heavy and they should have given her a support rod, but they didn't. So bad engineering on For You's part for sure. But the paint and like the quality of this figure, I've heard pretty good reviews about, so I'm not too, too concerned. And again, a 1-7 scale figure for 11,000 yen in this economy, you really can't complain. You would pay about that much for one of the Kotobukiya Pokemon figures. That one is a 1-8 scale and not a 1-7. And in my opinion, they are pretty simple figures. So in terms of bang for your buck, this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's go ahead and open her up. I did think that she was listed as a B condition, like an opened figure, but the tape has never been cracked on this. So she must have been an A, which is strange. I thought that her price was reflected by like that she'd been opened or like maybe the box was in bad condition, but like she seems pretty brand new to me. So that's impressive. I'm not expecting too much in terms of base here. Yeah, we've just got some like basic cobblestone going on. Decent shape though, it's kind of interesting. Miss Katarina herself, uh, pray for me that there are no breaks or paint flaws on this figure because that would be upsetting. Let's just see here. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited. She's so good. I don't know why every time I'm surprised. Honest to God, I think that 98% of the figures in my collection look way better in real life than they do in the promotional photos. And so honestly, like, 
I'm actually blown away. To be completely honest, she looks so much better in real life than she does in the promotional fixture. Fixtures. I'm speechless, literally. One thing that I feel like needs to be noted before I even put her in the base, I can already feel that this one leg that she's supported by is like, not as sturdy as it needs to be for sure. Like if you're gonna do this big dress sculpt, like you gotta do some engineering to make sure that she's not just gonna like topple over or like the weight of her skirt isn't gonna like break her off by her ankle or something. So I'm thinking perhaps I will have to do some DIY and make her a support rod because this is just not it. However, the rest of her is really gorgeous. There were a few times that I almost bought this figure like broken or busted off of my figure collection. There was a listing for her that was up for a really long time that had like her hair bow had busted off in shipping and it was about a hundred US dollars. And at the time I was like, you know what? That's probably like the best I'll ever find her for, blah, blah. I'm glad I held off because I got a basically perfect copy for even less than that in my own currency. And oh my God, is she gorgeous. It seems a little bit weird, but I am actually quite impressed by the shading on her boots. I do have a lot of figures that wear boots and usually they are not as sculpted and beautiful as these ones are. The laces are perfect and the shading makes it look like it's real leather. Honestly, her face as well is way cuter in real life than it is in the promotional photos. I did know that that would probably be the case due to the reviews that I've seen about this figure, but I can definitely attest to that as well. She is so pretty. The paint job on this figure is insanely crisp and clean from the barrette in her hair to the bracelet on her wrist, the pattern on her overskirt. Everything is perfect. There is not a single astray line on this figure at all, and I am thoroughly impressed. I do actually want to take a moment to highlight the hair sculpt on this figure. I know it doesn't look very impressive at first, but the closer you look, like the split ends she's got on some of the strands here, the way that they've painted the gradation in the colors of her hair, I just really think that they've knocked this out of the park and I really, really, really like the way it's sculpted. I am definitely going to be seeing what I can do about making her a support rod though, because she is way too top heavy for my comfort. She also does not have metal foot pegs. She only has plastic and she literally only has this one point of contact with her really tiny ankle to prop up the entire figure. So she is definitely gonna be a leaner if I don't do something to try to prevent that. And I am somebody that really cares about the longevity of my collection. So I'm gonna be seeing what I can do about that but otherwise she is so fantastic. I am so pleased, especially that I got her for such an amazing price. She is a perfect addition to my collection and I am so excited to have her. I absolutely love her way, way more than I ever thought that I would. She is an absolutely gorgeous figure. If you are at all on the fence about her, if you could pick her up for a decent price, I would say go for it. She is really, really amazing and she is a great piece to have in my collection. But that's got to wrap us up for today, friends. Thank you so, so much for watching as always, and I'll catch you on the flip side.